Hello and welcome to this training video on Landsweeper reporting. Today I'm going to cover all of the reporting options you have both in Landsweeper Classic and in Landsweeper Cloud. Uh, and I'm going to show you both of them so you have an idea of how you could make reports, what reporting can do for you, and more. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Uh, reporting in Landsweeper can happen in two ways. Obviously, you can report in Landsweeper Classic or in Landsweeper Cloud, depending on which version you use. Um, and there is quite a difference because the classic version of Landsweeper uses a SQL database, which means that you'll be reporting using SQL queries. Whereas in the cloud, we use a Mongo database, which then means obviously it's a different language. So we're also reporting there is also used or uses a different language. Um, but to make it a bit easier in cloud, we have added a report builder there that lets you um, create reports without having to actually go into coding itself. Um, but it will all become clear once we actually head into the product and show you it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So we're going to start with the reporting in cloud, where if we want to head over to reports, there is a separate section for it. Where we get an overview of all of our reports um, that we have in. These are all the built-in ones, uh, basically. There are categories, so if you want to find something specific, you can always browse through the categories or on the top right-hand corner, there's a search button to find something specifically. If you do have custom reports, we have a custom preset filter basically for custom reports. So any report that you've created uh, will show up here. So you can quickly find your own personally created reports. Now, as for the reports themselves, let me just throw one open. So as you can see here, report is basically just a list of devices that you've configured with predefined filters. Um, there are a couple of options that you have here that you can see in the top right. So you can either immediately just run the report again. You can schedule reports. So in the cloud, you can make sure that your reports run every X amount of days. Um, let's take a look at it. So you have a couple of options here, either run it every day or on specific days where you can choose when they actually run again. So you always have an up-to-date report. You don't have to run it manually yourself every time you look at it. Um, obviously, you can edit it. Duplicate, which is a very important option. Uh, any default report, any kind of built-in report that you have in your Landsweeper installation, you can duplicate, which means that then once you've duplicated, you can start editing it. If you go to some of the built-in reports, you'll notice that the edit button is grayed out, which means that uh, you basically have to duplicate it first before you can start editing it. But it's a great way to basically use a default report as a template to then start working on editing it, um, take things from for your own reports, etc. Export, uh, you can export reports either in CSV or uh, an Excel file. Then you can expose it through the API. So if you want to use data from specific reports in integrations, um, then you can expose certain reports to the API and then use that data in your integrations. Um, and then you've got report settings, which is just um, the description, for example, of the reports that you can adjust there. So with that being said, let's exit out of here and let's create a new report from scratch to show you what that looks like. Um, so in the cloud report builder, we work with MongoDB, as I mentioned, which means that we're building a report in steps. So the first step is that we have to select a couple of fields. Then we have three different types of collections and that you can choose data from, either from devices and software, Office 365 or user information. And we're just going to go with the devices and software, where I'm just going to select a couple of basic fields. Um, I'm going to take them out of the asset collection here. Um, just asset name, description, um, let's something like build number type, just a few basic things just to give you an idea. Um, and then you'll probably get something like this, um, uh, just a, a random collection of devices. Um, there's no filters added to this yet. So basically, it'll just give you a preview here on the right-hand side of what your report would look like if you were to run it right now or save it right now, um, which we don't want to do yet. Um, additionally, I want to add some filters. So I'm going to add a few filters here where the asset type name, for example, um, is equal to Windows. So we at least filter all our results on Windows already. Um, and then even I could say, um, okay, now I have one filter, maybe I want to add a second one where I'm looking for a specific build of Windows. Um, so I'm going to do another equal to, 
And then let's say take one of the top ones there, 4010. That should give us a few results as well. And you can keep going like that, um, even add an, an extra field one where if you want to eventually change the name of something, maybe I want to um, change the asset type name on here. I want to kind of change the name of that column itself, give it an alias. So we just call it asset type instead because asset type name isn't really that good for a name for that column. So just call it asset type instead. And I could even continue on like that. Let's say I want to group them um, based on the build number. And also add, oh, not add an operator, but show the count. So there I see that I have in total 25 of these devices that have this specific Windows build number. If I go back to the top, um, there's here where I can actually change the name of the report. So let's say a Windows build number. And then when I save it, I can also choose which category it goes into along with a description as well. Um, I'm not going to bother too much with that right now, but just go ahead and save it. Then once I close it, it'll automatically run the report once you save it. And there, as you can see, I have my finished report, same as the example basically showed, um, but that's what it comes down to really. So that's a quick overview of the cloud report builder. Let's head back to the classic one and show that one real quick. So here in the Landsweeper Classic Report Builder, uh, I'm in the overview of all of the reports where similar to the previous view that you saw, you have a list of all of your reports, but unlike the previous view, there's no categorization here. Um, so it's a bit more, it might be a bit more difficult to find something, but you do have the filters at the top to sort or filter your specific report so you can find it a bit easier. Um, however, similar to the Cloud Report Builder, all you need to do is just click on any of the reports to open them. You get a list of exactly the reports that you've opened, and you can then export it. On the left-hand side are the options. You can export all of the reports um, or all the results to um, an Excel file, CSV, even XML, um, or you can delete it and edit it as well. Um, so to show you the Report Builder, we're going to create a new report um, where you'll have kind of the screen will be divided in three sections. So at the top, you have your, ver your visual uh, visualization of the data tables. Uh, below is kind of a list of the data fields that you have selected. And at the bottom is the SQL query, where it's just a raw code, basically. Um, at the top, obviously, we can give it a title. Let's call that test. Um, and then on the left-hand side here is where you have the list of all of the data tables that are in Landsweeper um, with a search as well. So if we want to find some of the basic ones, although um, by default, it will already, as you can see, load in a couple of tables. So table assets is in here, for example. Let's make it a bit larger. Um, and all some of the basic fields are also already selected. Um, but then if you want to filter certain things, then you can add things like here where you want to be the asset name is something specific. Um, for example, here I've filtered it where the asset name has to include my name, which I know there's a few devices that have that. But also if you add additional data, um, like I know computer system has a table here. If I drag this one in, for example, it will automatically create the relations that are required between the different data tables to ensure that you know, once you actually select some data from here, um, it does actually show up in your report and it doesn't provide you any kind of errors. So let's just say I want to add domain role here, maybe something else like, I'm just picking a few random things here, number of processors maybe here as well as power state. Um, and then I can save and run the report. And then as you can see, we get our report completed here. Last thing for the classic land sweeper that you can do with reports is you can also use it in kind of alerts. So we have in the configuration, you can find email alerts where you can basically send reports based on a specific schedule. Um, so that way, if you want to get a version or a report in your email inbox every so often, or depending on you know, specific criteria, et cetera, you can do that. So I'm just going to select a random report here, basically, to show it off. Um, and now once you select the report, you can choose whether it's just uh, email or it goes immediately into a directory. 
Um, obviously, I have to choose the email group that I want to send it to, what type of export. So do I want it as an Excel file, a CSV file, or do I just want it to be straight in the HTML of the email? Then I can adjust the time scatter, so when it's sent, basically. Um, and then all I need to do is enable it to actually start running the email uh, report, basically. Um, one big side note here is that those reports that you do add in uh, email alerts are only sent if there is data in the actual report, so it won't send you any kind of empty reports uh, because those wouldn't be really useful. Um, so we don't send any kind of any empty reports, only ones that have data in it. Um, so this, for example, if you do have a report that shows you, let's say an easy example is the a report of all the devices that have been scanned or have new devices that have been found in the last 24 hours. If there were no new devices in the last 24 hours, you won't get an email. If there were some, then you will get an email with those new devices found in the last 24 hours. Um, so with that, I think I've covered everything here about reporting. And if you want to learn more, you can head over to the next video.